Okay, so this is impressive. This is the first time the room has started sitting down and getting quiet without me having to say anything. I think that's fantastic. Um, my name is Allie. I am your MC for the night for Atlanta Startup Village number 53. I appreciate that. That's, I like that. There's like some, some halfway clapping. I appreciate that too. We'll do that. Um, so a little housekeeping before we get started. We normally have five presenters, five minutes pitching, and five minutes of Q&A. Tonight we had one presenter back out. Don't worry, they will be back in January, February. Um, they had some amazing news that they wanted to make sure they were timed right around. So they will be back for us. Um, and thank you for showing up on sort of a weird date. Normally we are the last Monday of the month. Obviously that's not what this is this week. So between holidays, we appreciate it, everybody coming out. I had some confused people last week on Twitter who were like, wait, I'm here, but nothing's happening, and that's accurate. So thank you for coming back. I appreciate it. Justin, I see you. Yeah, that was you. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so we have a couple of sponsors we need to thank, and first and foremost is Pull Spark. You guys see that guy with the camera back there? Let's all wave to the guy with the camera and say thank you. Yeah, I like it. All right, this is, this is a team effort. Um, so Emma and Pull Spark are our sponsor, and they do the live stream every single week, this live stream behind me, which means your friends, your parents, your grandma, everybody can watch it online, and later on you can watch a recording of yourself and tell yourself what you don't want to do again next time you're in front of people. Um, so every single month they are here for us, and additionally, how many people have beer? You guys don't look as excited as I am about beer. Thank you. All right. So we have two beer sponsors tonight, and the first one is Alex with Trust Stamp. Come on up, Alex. Say something pretty. Hey, round of applause for beer, guys. Thank you. So I feel like I've already met everybody here today, but I'll, I'll go ahead and give you the, uh, the pitch again. So my name is Alex Valdez, as mentioned, um, with Trust Stamp, and we have recently launched a new product called Trusted Mail. Trusted Mail is a artificial intelligence powered encrypted email service that uses biometrics to verify that the sender of an email and the recipient of an email are who they say they are. Uh, we discovered this need when we were working with large financial institutions and real estate uh, organizations who are suffering from this type of fraud in great numbers. In fact, um, organizations and individuals suffer from over $50 billion per year related to wire fraud. Uh, one high-profile case, to give you an example, happened to a California company who lost $46.7 million from a CEO fraud when a spoofed email impersonating the CEO was sent to the finance department of the corporation, uh, requesting that the funds be sent to an untraceable account abroad. Pretty terrible. So in another case, uh, there was a Colorado couple uh, this past year, actually, who lost their entire life savings after sending nearly $300,000 to the wrong de uh, bank details, which they received from a spoofed email uh, after their agent's account had been hacked during a real estate transaction. So phishing emails and spoof attacks target anybody who's, who attempts to send sensitive information via the internet. Um, and to make matters worse, we are yet, and we've done a lot of searching, we're yet to find an, an errors and emissions policy that covers this type of fraud. So once the money is sent, it can't be retrieved, nor can it be recovered. So our mission with Trusted Mail is to protect every party in a personal and business transaction by preventing wire fraud. To stay protected, simply anytime you, you send an email containing any sensitive information, such as bank details, wire instructions, et cetera, use Trusted Mail. Trusted Mail integrates directly with your existing email service and can be used to uh, prevent fraud um, every time that you send an email. So uh, please, again, uh, I think we, I gave a lot of information at the beginning, but please stop by. Uh, we're having a bug hunt phase right now, so we're, we're trying to get as many beta testers to uh, help us send bugs, and we can go ahead and launch the product. It's like a whole new Nigerian print scam. Um, okay, we have one more beer sponsor. Again, you guys have all the beer, and so you should give a warm welcome to Amelia with Emery. 
Hi, everyone. Um, nice to meet you all. Uh, I'm new to the uh, entrepreneurship scene here in Atlanta. I'm uh, the new director of entrepreneurship. I come from uh, a big, leading a big global program, uh, at Innova uh, an innovation program at Accenture. Um, we are revamping all of our initiatives around entrepreneurship at Emory. So there's a lot of new efforts that we're putting in place, new initiatives, and also increasing the visibility of some of the ones that we have in place. Uh, one of the things that we're doing and starts in January is a new accelerator. So just curious, how many people in this room are either a student, an alumni, a faculty, or staff at Emory? Curious? So, okay. Or maybe you know someone there. Uh, that pr this program is open pretty much to anybody as long as one person on the team has um, uh, someone from Emory in the, in the team. And it's a 10-week program. Um, and it uh, starts in January and it ends in uh, April with a final demo day. Um, but we're doing many other things. We just appointed five entrepreneurs in residence. David Cummings at ADV, applause please, <laughs> is uh, one of them. Uh, and we have a few more. Uh, there are more activities that we do at Emory that not everybody might be familiar with. One of them is the Raise Forum, uh, which we do every six months. And it is uh, open to companies that have been uh, you know, in business and that are looking for one to five billion uh, in funding. So, and there are many other initiatives that we have in place at Emory. So Emory wants to be more known also for around some of the activities that we do in entrepreneurship. So thanks for being here. Okay, what you guys are all here for, we are gonna kick off our pitches with Fanboard. Take it away, guys. Thank you so much. Let's get a quick read on this room by either Jeers or Cheers. Who's excited to have the Georgia Bulldogs in the playoffs this year? I really wasn't sure what to expect with that question. Well, I'm Morgan Drake with Fanboard. And Fanboard is a platform that allows marketers to advertise to fans at live events using augmented reality. See, the sports marketing industry is an $18 billion market. And, this, and marketers are spending more here every single year. But they need better insight into fan behavior because marketers are struggling to connect and target and advertise the fans inside the venue. Because there's no solution that provides real-time information, and there's not a single solution that allows marketers to engage and track users attending these events. So basically, marketers are spending massive amounts of money with no clear insight into their ROI. But with Fanboard's fun augmented reality platform, sponsored branded AR games, track user experiences, engage fans, and provide clear insights into ROI. So now fans attending an event are gonna experience Godzilla-sized mascots trampling the field after every home run. Characters are gonna come to life. And in a few months, this guy's gonna freaking talk to you. But today, fans can teleport through a portal. We can take them to places like the bullpen, the dugout, the locker room, or even back in time to their last World Series win. Fans can also engage with the big screen by taking a fun, goofy selfie. We can also encourage fans to share this content on social with incentives and rewards. And so we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into this last example. Many of you might be familiar with the SunTrust, uh, at, uh, the Home Depot tool race at SunTrust Park. And right now marketers have no clue who's paying attention. But with Fanboard, fans take that fun, goofy selfie. The content goes to the marketing team and they get to send their favorites to the big screen. They also can filter through to winners. So if you're the hammer and the hammer wins, you'll get a coupon that says, come back and get a free gourmet hot dog. So what really just happened there? Again, marketers went to knowing absolutely nothing about this experience, to knowing how many people took the selfie, how many Home Depot tools ended up on the big screen, how many Home Depot tools ended up on social, and how many sales were derived from this experience. So as fans are interacting with these experiences, they're naturally creating user-generated content rich with native advertising. A branded Home Depot tool is an excellent example of native advertising. In fact, with just 5% engagement, we're talking about tens of thousands of new impressions inside the venue. 
We're also talking about hundreds of thousands of new impressions out, outside of the venue on social for every single sporting event. Now here is a true home run. Marketers get to sit back and relax because now they're leveraging their army of fans for content creation and distribution. And this is a big deal. The US sports market is a $75 billion industry and the sponsorship piece of this pie is an $18 billion opportunity. Augmented reality is on the rise and the beautiful thing about AR is it doesn't require any additional headset or any additional hardware. Fanboard makes money by charging brands and agencies by reach, that simple. Because we partner with sports clubs across the country, we can take branded AR experiences and plug them into a distribution channel with immediate access to hundreds of thousands of eyeballs. So an advertiser can buy a single ballpark, the Midwest, or every single ballpark across the country. We're starting with minor league baseball, and this is perfect because a single team doesn't attract the attention of a national advertiser, but collectively they become very attractive to Fortune 500 companies. Just think for a second. How many McDonald's exist in the Reno's, the Tulane's, the Tulsa's of the country? Franchises want to engage with this local footprint, and Fanboard becomes the most efficient way to do so. We started our first beta with the Gwinnett Braves. We called this experience Chopper Chase. Think Pokemon Go, but instead of fans capturing Pokemon, they're capturing Chopper, the mascot. We're now prepping pilots with the Gwinnett Braves, the Charlotte Knights, and the Daytona Tortugas. And our plan is to have a dozen live by the beginning of the 2018 season. Here are a few companies that um, they provide branded, experience, or branded apps, but they're mostly on event management. We're laser focused on um, event experiences, specifically AR experiences and growing ad inventory. This is our awesome team. We are by far the most dynamic, connected, and let's be honest, coolest option for fan experiences. And Fanboard is bringing the magic of AR to live events. Thank you. <laughs> Sir. The question is, have we launched already? And the answer is, Sort of. <laughs> we, have four, we have a demo where we have four, uh, prod, uh, four demo products. Uh, we have the Pokemon Go style, what we call Chases. We have the Faces, which is the, um, the Home Depot tool. We have, the, uh, we have um, uh, characters we call holograms, and then we have the portals. Uh, what we're doing now is building a nice polished product for the Gwinnett Braves. When actually, I should not say Gwinnett Braves. On December 8th, they are announcing their new name, which I don't know what it is yet. But we are building their, the, an app for them. And then the next products are actually going to be uh, experiences that correlate with the game itself. So when there's a base runner on, you know, at first base, we'll be able to put Mario Kart balloons above the base runner, and fans can pop them. Or after a home run, uh, we can make Papa John's pizza toppings fall from the sky. And now we're creating a Fruit Ninja-style game with uh, pizza toppings. Uh, so that's what we will do uh, by, this, by the beginning of uh, the 2018 season here. Yes? Most definitely. So right now, and I also want to clarify, uh, the question was, what is the fan board revenue model? What is our business model? Um, right now what we're doing is just partnering with minor league teams and what we do is we build a white label app. This is not a fan board app to be specific. So we're creating a new app for the Gwinnett, soon to be named, used to be Braves, and that's where these experiences will live. What we do is we then go to Coca-Cola or Chevy and we say, hey, we're going to make you a branded experience for these events. And we have so many people already playing with these fun experiences that are correlated with the game. We're gonna, we know we're going to have at least X percentage of um, you know, downloads and participa participation. Most beautiful thing, too, is you're going to be in the local footprint where you live and breathe, and you don't have to manage these experiences that are the most engaging technology to date. So we charge the brands and the agencies that represent them, um, and that, that's how we uh, make our money. Yes, sir.
So the question was, are we focused on headsets? Is that right? Is that So yes, we want to make sure that we're always thinking ahead of the game. You know, we don't want to be chasing after what someone else is already doing. Um, as of right now, though, the beautiful thing about uh, AR is it doesn't require a headset. So as of right now, for the next, um, probably next two years, um, we're not going to be focused on it. We did actually just make a new hire, uh, a Georgia Tech grad who's now in San Francisco. Uh, throughout his master's program, he was uh, mostly focused on hardware, um, so more like HoloLens type of things. As the technology advances where we have, you know, more sunglasses, you know, type uh, hardware that's just easy to transport, easy to get around, um, easier to wear, then of course, yeah, we want to make sure that we're using uh, that type of technology. Great question. So, and the question was, how, do you, how does a fan get to this experience? Um, so there's a few ways that we want to get fan, lead them to the experiences. And this is also a part of the business model, is knowing if we have a place where uh, we have strong team brands, loyal fan bases, all these people already here, and then we can say, uh, put up a, a few video uh, demos on the big screen or display boards, you know, have a few loudspeaker announcements, and then also, if, they, if the team already has an app, we can lead them to the fan board app that we've built them. Again, it's a white label app. So it's, think of uh, Facebook, Facebook Messenger type of relationship that we would have with the team's existing app. So if they already have something that does merchandise, concession, parking, and all you know, the event management, we want to lead them to the event experiences. Alternatively, if you're a fan who's a casual fan, and that's really who we're going after, someone who doesn't care about stats, doesn't care about highlights, this is a fan who's never going to go to a team's app. So how do we learn about them? And that's how we're going to guide them to these experiences so they have fun and we'll learn about who they are. All right, round of applause for Fanboard. Thanks, guys. Questions additional to that, you can catch them after. Uh, so we have fantastic volunteers that set up all the chairs that y'all are sitting in and take them down later, which means that they get 30 seconds to pitch in between. So can I have an in chem? Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Nkem, and I'm here to talk to you about a side project I've been working on called Nothing But Art. It's a blind hiring platform for creatives. Think of graphic designers, artists, that kind of thing. We're basically trying to pair people who, who need work with people who can supply work for them. I'll be in the back if you want to talk to me about it. I have a working prototype. I need some feedback on the project that I've been working on. I also work for Better Cloud. I'm a product manager over there. We're hiring, so if you want to talk to me about that, I can talk to you about that, too. Cool. All right. We've got one more volunteer. Sunil, you are up. Are you an early stage startup or experienced startup looking for software development help? Are you already working on a product and need some help our second opinion on technologies or product strategies. Ever wondered if you need a CTO, a designer, or a developer, and how to get help? Good evening, all. Quartzmart Labs is a full-fledged software development company focusing on early-stage startups. We work with all size companies, like small, medium, large companies with very flexible pricing models to fit your needs. We are local to Atlanta. We can help you right away. This is Sunil. We are running a special to build your prototype for a fixed price. And don't, we'll be right there. For more information, please talk to us. Thank you. All right, our second presenter of the night, Wedding Soda. Hi, guys. I'm Lenora. I am the founder of Wedding Soda. So two years ago, I was in a wedding and my bride got engaged 12 months before the actual wedding day. In between that time, there was sneaky text messages like, hey, do you still have that link? Um, how much is this costing us? Are we going on a girl's trip? So many questions that 
were going on during that wedding. And as my fifth time in a wedding, I was like, I'm never going to be in anybody else's wedding ever again. Does anyone else like resonate with that? Yes? Okay. So you guys understand what I'm talking about. So I came up with Wedding Soda, which is an app that gives a series of timelines and reminders and a budget for the entire bridal party. So this app basically keeps everyone streamlined, knowing where they're going to be, and it keeps the bride from going crazy because she knows exactly what everyone is doing and when they have completed each task. So there is about $42 million of untapped revenue that could be tapped into if vendors would market to the entire wedding party instead of just the couple. So Wedding Soda kind of taps into this because the marketing goes to the entire team once they are imported into it. Um, about $40 billion is spent on weddings in the U.S. alone every year. And trust me, Africa, Asia, and Europe is money everywhere as far as weddings are concerned. So this is what my app looks like. So I'm gonna do a quick demo and I'm shaking, so. Okay, so basically um, if I were to sign up my sister, this is what it would look like as I add her to the group. So I would send her an invitation um, as well as put in her email and her text so she would get text messages and emails that constantly remind her of her role. So the invitation goes out, and then I would put in um, the checklist. So the checklist would basically be um, you need to get your dress, you need to get fitted for whatever it is, and you add all the tasks. So once my sister would say, yes, I accept, I will be in your wedding, she would see all the tasks as well as the budget of what it's going to cost her to participate. So here's my nice little invite. Accept, decline, and she better not decline. I know she's watching. <clears throat> so this is the vendor side. Um, in the couples portal, they can go in and look at all the vendors that are signed up. And if I played it, that would be helpful. Oh, shoot. Back. Sorry, guys. So this is my vendor portal. So it's a vendor shop that looks pretty much just like my competitors, um, but mine is better. So what happens is they can filter on any category as far as entertainment, photography, um, anything of that sort and kind of pick, and they will be able to see the vendor's store. In the store, the vendors would be able to put all of their services, um, where they're located, and like a little ad blurb of what it is that they offer. So how do I make money? The vendors pay me a monthly fee. There's also a paid pro um, part where the couple is able to escalate what they have. In the paid pro, um, there is a gifting portion. So if the couple has, say, a certain venue that they had in mind, but they only have a budget for one thing, the um, bridal party and guests are able to see their wish list, and they can give money towards the wish list so that the couple is able to obtain kind of what it is that they want, and I take a nice percent of that. Okay, so this is where we are. Um, I have raised $7,500. I'm very proud of that to build this app um, through friends and family that have helped me and believe in my dream. Thank you. I also obtained um, IT solutions there in India. So I talked to them just about at 5 a.m. almost every day. And the demo app is built and ready. We're testing right now. And I will be in app stores February on Valentine's Day. So. <laughs> and we knew my battery. Okay, so that was perfect timing because my battery died. Any questions? Yes? Um, the question was, why wedding soda? And the answer is, I was looking for a URL, and it was just taking me, like, forever. Um, I just couldn't find one, honestly. So the last one that I tried to buy was WedPop. And that was taken, so I was like, wedding soda, fine. And this is where we are. <laughs> Any other questions? 
Wedding Wire is actually my, oh, repeat the question. Thank you, Allie. So the question is, who is my top competitor and why? Um, my top competitor is, is Wedding Wire. Um, Wedding Wire is actually owned by Martha Stewart. And so the reason that they are my competitor is because they are doing the most right now as far as the wedding game is concerned and having like users signed up and things of that sort. I'm completely different from them because I market to the entire bridal party. There is no one out right now. That's so weird, but there's no one out right now that cares about the bridal party. So they're not catering to them. They're not organizing them. And so I would say I'm my own competition <laughs> right now because there's just no one else out. Yes? So no, it's free for the base, but there's also a paid pro version, which includes like the giving. So is it free? Yes, it's free for all that would like to use it. So if you'd like to download it in February, please do so that I can have as many downloads as possible. I don't care if you're getting married or not. <laughs> Thanks. Yes? Say that one more time. Uh -huh. Okay. So he, the question was, how do the vendors interact with the bridal party? So there is the vendor store, like I showed you, but there's also paid advertisements. And unfortunately, in the free app, there's like annoying pop-ups and things like that where they would constantly see the marketing from my vendors because um, we want them to buy, buy, buy. Yes. Anyone else? I'm like scared because y'all not asking questions. Please, somebody ask me one more question, please. Yes. Right, so it goes to wedding party and guests. Oh, so he said, how do I access everyone involved in the wedding? So, um, it goes to wedding party and guests. So your guests will get a save the date. Um, they would also get invitations just uh, like that that say accept or um, deny. And they would get timelines and reminders for the events that they're involved in or the couple that would want them to be involved in. So bridal showers, bachelorette parties, that's not always just the bridal party, that's you know the, the guests as well. So they're involved, and then day of the wedding, they get directions and things of that sort, which reminds me, there is a um, rate at the end. So the entire wedding party gets a survey, and on a scale of one to 10, with all the vendors that they've interacted with, they are able to say, did you like the cake? Did you like the lighting? Did you like the flowers, all of those things, and then it's kind of like a Yelp that goes back in the system so that the next couple that comes along, if you'd like, um, would be able to see the ratings as well, so. Yes? So, the question is, what's the go-to-market strategy? I would like to say congratulations, because they just got engaged in October, and they're awesome. I can sniff out a couple, yes. <laughs> Um, so my go-to-market strategy as of right now, thank you for that, because I am looking for $250,000 to market nationally, um, and we're going to start actually in the U.S., as well as rolling out in South Africa, Ghana, and Nigeria. Um, reason being is, thank you, <laughs> he's Nigerian, see, you guys need to download my app, please, thank you. Um, Reason being is because the wedding market um, is just huge on those platforms, and I would like to be able to extend myself to them. So, yes. Yes, so the paid pro version actually has an admin, so that admin could also be a wedding planner. Good question. Yes, ma'am. I think we have one more question, if that, we're wrapping up. Okay. Uh, 
Um, yes. So there is kind of a map. So if they put in the wedding date as six months, the timelines and reminders go from there, and they can adjust it if they choose. It's right. super complicated, but it's dope. Yes. <laughs> Round of applause for wedding Zeta, guys. Sorry, the timer doesn't always beep, so sometimes it's a bit of a test. Um, all right, we've got two more fantastic volunteers. Krishna with Whoa. Thank you. I feel like that should be like really high. I appreciate that. Yes. All right, so I was uh, meeting some friends for dinner at a new restaurant, and uh, I get there, and no one's there yet. So I get a table, and I start texting them to figure out where they were while the waiter keeps walking back and forth and looking at me like, I know you don't have any friends. And uh, if you've ever been there before where you're the first one to arrive, it's awkward. And all I really wanted to know was where they were or when they were going to get there. And that feeling really sucks, even if you're the one running late. So that's why we created Woe. Woe lets you and your friends share how long it is until you get there. Uh, no GPS location, no dots on a map, no privacy concerns. Just how long till you show up. And we even uh, alert you every time someone arrives. We're currently in a public beta in the App Store, so give us a download today and please try our app. My name is Christian. I'll be at the back to tell you more about Woe. Thank you. Okay, efficient. Uh, Judd, where are you? There you are. Can everyone hear me? I'll use it. Okay. My name's Judd Taylor. That's J U D, just one D, because that's all you need. Um, I'm a geek. And I am also a software entrepreneur, and I lived in Japan and built a company there. I lived there about 17 years. And I'm going to give you a demo of two versions of an elevator pitch, and you can tell me later in the back which one you think was good and which one you think was bad, and then we can talk about how to help. So the first one is, um, my software is a metadatabase-based, multilingual, user-agent responsive app development platform that's on the... FreeBSD, Apache, Postgres, PHP, Stack. So you should buy it, okay? Here's another one. Here's a second one. Mr. Tobacco Company, on your uh, next mobile promotion, I can save you over a million dollars by making your development uh, faster, one month instead of six. Use one team instead of four and have two people on that team instead of four. And we'll also eliminate team, co team coordination headaches. I did this with a company larger than yours last year. So you can tell me which one of those you think is better. We can talk in the back. Um, I am softwarecopywriting.com. Thank you. Our third presenter, Blanket Holmes. Hello, everyone. My name is Trey Young. It's my co-founder. John O'Brien, um, our company is Blanket. Uh, we provide luxury Airbnbs for business travelers. Um, John and I are very good and loyal Airbnb travelers. Um, with traveling to a lot of Airbnbs, we experienced a lot of issues with homes being not as clean as we would like, um, check-in process not being too smooth, um, also, a lot of people sometimes leave their personal items in the home when you stay at them. So what we discovered was with the goods and the bads of Airbnb, you have the ability to live like a local and then also normally with the Airbnb, what you pay for is usually more than um, what you'll get at staying in the hotel. So what we decided to do was we invested our money in our own Airbnb in Atlanta and we structured it and um, designed it for only travelers until we received an email from our leasing office saying that we had to take it off or we'd be evicted. So with that, we discovered there's another problem, which is about 85% of the Airbnbs in Atlanta are illegal. Um, Surprising to a lot of you that probably stayed in Atlanta Airbnbs. Um, so what we decided to do was work with apartment communities. And with working with apartment communities, we decided, it's been over a year and a half to try to figure out how we can work with apartments to allow us to offer short-term travel for Airbnbers. 
Um, and what we did was we begged and pleaded for, again, like a year and a half, um, and then found an apartment complex that said yes to us, which led us to um, our new um, business model, which is considered a virtual hotel. Um, what a virtual hotel is, is that if you think about a hotel in structure and operations, and you get that hotel and you divvy it up and spread it amongst different buildings, that's what a virtual hotel is. Um, and we decided to only operate within um, apartment communities that are in centralized business districts. Um, with this, we have offered a lot of streamlined services and tested out a lot of streamlined services with our travelers, such as um, pickups from the airport, which will get you to um, your unit and also to your room, which John will explain more into detail. Um, also, we also other services like um, we offer um, groceries, we offer laundry services, and we also offer rentals um, for our travelers. There are three reasons why this makes a lot of sense right now. So uh, the first reason is that there's demand without supply. If you look at the Airbnb adoption curve, the early, uh, early adopters were people like couch surfers and college students. After that came the early majority, which was leisure travelers, then the late majority, which is where we're at now with business travelers. The supply on Airbnb is largely uh, inadequate for business travel. Second reason is market dislocation. So uh, with Airbnb, coming uh, into existence. Prior to that, lodging was primarily centered in hotels. Afterwards, you have the entire real estate, residential real estate market that opens up as a viable option for um, lodging, right? So with that, you get this price uh, disparity. Basically, you, for, with the same unit um, of residential unit, you can get two to three X off of short-term rentals, what you could get off of uh, long-term rentals. And then th the third reason why right now makes sense is that the apartment market is saturating heavily. So in the last year, 2017, almost every metro area in the US saw greater than the 20 year average before that and as much as 50% to 100% over that average. So this is what our product uh, is essentially. So you go onto our website or any site that we market through and you book a room. In that process, you'll have a conversation with one of our reservation specialists. They'll ask you about your needs, purpose of travel, and then um, and, and preferences so that we can best suit your, uh, your purpose for, of travel. Whenever you arrive, you'll receive a text guiding you to the person that will be picking you up and then they will take you to your room. This is a, a fairly important point because um, that's one of the high friction points with multifamily housing is that uh, there are lots of security checkpoints versus a hotel, right? Um, once you arrive in your room, your rental car keys, your food uh, will be there, your food will be in the refrigerator. And then while you're there, you'll be staying in a luxury apartment in a highly amenitized community, pools, uh, gyms, high-speed internet, et cetera, and you'll have access to co-working spaces. The best way to learn about Blanket Homes is to experience it. We're offering everyone here $50 off your first stay with the promo code ATV Pitch. Thank you. Yeah. So, okay, go ahead. Okay, so what we do is, oh, she wants to know how do groceries get in the refrigerator? Is that right? Okay, so what we do is, once you deal with our reservation specialist, she will ask you an array of questions um, so we can get your preference. What we try to do is we build a database under all, for all of our travelers, so when you stay with us again, you don't have to worry about telling us your favorite snacks, your favorite drinks, those will be in the unit when you arrive. So we ask, what is your favorite drink? Do you like Dasani? Do you like Deer Park? We ask for your favorite snacks, um, also any favorite candies. We don't give them everything, but we give them just enough, right? So as soon as you arrive to the building, your items that you ask will be in the fridge like you want. Next question. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My man in the back. Um, five days, we normally, oh, sorry. Um, our average stay for a five-day trip for a business client. Um, your average, our average rate will probably be anywhere between $99 a night to around $129 for business travelers. 
Um, we usually like to give the, a great discount to compete with hotels. Um, so we know you guys rate is way lower than what the average hotel rate is. So we like to stay within that margin. No problem. So we're in Atlanta, uh, Chattanooga, and Louisville currently. Oh, sorry. Where where can you find blanket homes? Atlanta, Louisville, Chattanooga. So how do we show for people? Uh, how do we get people from the airport to the room? And uh, the question said, um, do we use Uber or local Lyft drivers? Yes. So are you guys targeting the apartment homes with a certain address? How are, how are you showing that process? How do we target apartment homes? Um, by, and the question was, was it by occupancy or something else? Um, there, there are uh, quite a few criteria. Um, you can come chat with us in the back. A lot of this is basically um, comes down to partnerships that we have and partnerships that we're building. Yeah, so um, the question is, the price seems low at $99 to $130 a night. So, yeah, so, so to stay in the room is generally between $100 and $130 a night for weekdays. And then there's also uh, typically a cleaning charge that you'll be paying. And then also, if you get a ride, then that's rolled in as well. So, so some of the, these services are not um, necessarily all bundled in. They're a la carte. Does that make sense? Correct, yeah. We would love that. <laughs> oh, uh, if you have uh, some, can you book for someone else? Yes. Oh, yes. Um, yes, you. Who does who do the customers meet? Pay. 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 Okay. So this question is, who do the customers pay? The customers pay us. Um, they can book through our website or they can find a lot of our listings on via Airbnb, VRBO. Um, that's kind of how the transactions occur. Um, I saw somebody over here in the corner. Okay, so let me get your question correct. Um, do we deal with corporate traveling companies? Do we partner with corporate traveling companies to? So let's say I have a company, and I have a lot of travelers with my company, and I partner with you, and then you return and then you contract Yes, okay. Yeah, so do we partner with companies that have, um, that want to partner with us to have a lot of travelers stay with us, basically? or allow their employees to book with us? Um, and the answer is yes. That's we would definitely, we definitely partner with companies that we can give, um, um, once we find out how many employees you have coming for a certain project, um, we then can identify what location is the best, that best suits your travelers or your employees, and then we work out the best rate possible to um, cater to you guys' needs. Okay, let's give them a round of applause, guys. Thank you. All right, I have two more volunteers today. Lucas Hoffman, where are you? All right, y'all have to come stand toward the front. Do you have a data science problem? I would like to help you solve that problem. In other words, I'm looking for a freelance or full-time data science position. My background is that in undergrad, I did a scientific computing degree and in grad school, I have a PhD in neuroscience, which I just completed. I'm especially looking for a job in healthcare or biotech. However, I'm also interested in any other industry that uses uh, data science analytics. So please talk to me in the back afterwards. Thank you. 
and emphatic. All right. Nadiana? Yes, see, I said it right. <laughs> That's going to be on video forever. Have you had an idea that could eventually become a mobile app? If so, you're in the right place at the right time. I'm Mariana with App Zero. It spells A-P-P-Z-O-R-O. -P -P and we're a mobile app and web development company based here at ATV. We help startups and enterprises by providing solutions for their development needs. So just like we did with ATV whenever we developed their official mobile app. So if you have an idea and you don't know how to code, or you want your business to go mobile, come talk to me right in the back. Thank you. Mariana with F0. I'm going to go around Caitlin this time. So you know how I said there was a live stream. It's recorded. That's going to really live forever. All right. Our final presenter for tonight, because unfortunately our fifth presenter backed out, like I said, but they will be here next month. So our final presenter for tonight, Simple Showing. Take it away. How's it going, you guys? All right. Rock on. <laughs> My name is Fred Miguel, founder of Simple Showing. Uh, very excited to be here tonight, talk to you guys a little about the real estate space and what we're hoping to do to disrupt it. So Simple Showing is a mobile app that lets consumers book home tours or property showings on demand with or without a realtor. And if you use our service, we refund half of the realtor commission to you. So you get paid just like the realtor would get paid. Uh, we do some other stuff too, I'll show you. But just fundamentally the way that, sorry, the reason we uh, came to be and the reason we came into existence is we believe that the real estate space is fundamentally broken. It sets up really nicely for realtors. It sets up really badly for consumers. Uh, the reason why is the model that exists today has been around for like 50 years. It's pretty much unchanged. And the real estate space does not enjoy the sort of technology advancements and um, automation and, and sort of the, the the technology efficiencies that we've come to love and enjoy in other spaces and verticals and sectors, et cetera. Um, so just to sort of uh, dig into how the, uh, oh, well, how the model looks and works, I guess I gotta get closer with this guy. Um, if you look strictly at the selling side of the equation, you're selling a $500,000 home, you're gonna pay at least 3% commission, which ends up being 15,000 bucks. Now this was fine when homes were 100K or maybe 120K. You're only looking at a $3,000 check at the end. But it's very difficult to find a $100,000 home in Atlanta now. Um, so this has created a lot of angst, obviously, for people to pay this amount of money. And this is just the minimum. It's typically a little bit more than this, actually. Uh, so we started out about 10 months ago, and we came out uh, with a fixed fee model uh, to sort of address this listing side of the equation. And uh, if you use the same example earlier with a 500K, uh, we'll save that specific person 12,000 bucks because we're only charging three rather than 15. Uh, the best part of it is we do the exact same thing. So if you're thinking about selling a home or you know someone that is, you could pay 3% if you just have the extra money lying around. But if you don't want to pay that extra money for absolutely no reason, you might consider calling us. We'd love to work with you. Um, but we're most interested in the buying side of the equation, thus the name Simple Showing. Um, so we started out with the, the selling side about 10 months ago. Now we've moved into the buying side and we're releasing an app in two weeks. So it was really cool that Allie um, hooked us up with this because our app's coming out and we'd love for you guys to check it out in two weeks. But basically the reason why we think the buy side has a lot of opportunity is because millennials behave much, much differently when they're buying and searching for homes. Millennials will look uh, on 20 different websites just to buy one sweater. Um, obviously, they're going to have a lot of trouble, uh, or not trouble, but they're going to look very intently when they're trying to buy a property. Um, and that really helps us. Millennials are very savvy. They're very much contrarians. They don't like to spend money when there's a lot of ambiguity with the fees and processes. And that's exactly what real estate is. There's a lot of ambiguity. Uh, and so what we've come to learn is that buyers are basically looking for three to four months on their own. Um, and about eight in 10 people are buying, or excuse me, are finding the home they ultimately buy by themselves. In other words, they're finding a property without any sort of professional, they're doing it by themselves. Uh, however, uh, they run into an issue, and that is they've got great search apps, but they don't have a way to access the properties, and that's where, sort of where we come in. So we've come up with an app called the Simple Showing App, and the concept is be your own agent. Um, we let you initiate the showings. You pick a time, a day, a property. Either we show up or the seller shows up, depending on the situation. 
Um, if you do that, we refund half the commission that your, your buyer's agent would have normally, um, would have normally gotten. And so uh, basically the way it works, search, search on your own using Zillow or Realtor.com or any of the search apps that are out there. Come to our app, book a specific showing and a showing time, and get the money uh, at closing. There's also some advantages uh, specifically for sellers too. So uh, right now it only works for buyers, but we want to eventually create somewhat of a marketplace um, and sort of have network effects on both sides where there's both sellers and buyers and both can benefit. Um, not entirely removing the realtor from the equation, but that is our goal in some uh, transactions. We believe we can potentially save 6% on some home deals. Um, and we basically do this through an, um, an API to the MLS. Uh, in terms of traction, we've been, like I said, we've been around for about 10 months. Uh, we're now closing about five to six uh, home transactions each month, and we're growing nearly 40% month over month. We just expanded to Central Florida, and we hope to get into one or two more markets uh, by the end of this year. And as you can see here, are some of the savings from our clients. Uh, happy to take any questions. Thank you. Yes, sir. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Well, it depends on if they're, so the question was if, is there any benefit if, this, if the buyer is using our service but the seller is not, is that correct? Yeah, and also the rate lower rate of the, you know, helps get the seller involved in the app into the platform. Yeah. Yeah. If the seller has already been listed with another agent and it's sort of locked into some sort of listing agreement, you didn't really have to wait until it expires. Um, so unfortunately, it would be troublesome until that sort of uh, came to pass. But the best case scenario, just sort of an insider tip, you don't actually even really need a realtor on either side of the equation to buy. Like you could approach a seller and save all 6% if you wanted to, but it's just that, that, that touring process. Most homes that are for sale though, most of the time are listed 90% of the time with an agent. So, yes sir. So the question is, how do we offer uh, inspection and, and perform the contract on the on the buy side, on the sell side? Both um, same exact same scenario. I mean, the, the process is very similar. So on the listing side, you know, pe what people don't realize is that in order to sell a home, that three percent, the fifteen thousand dollars I was describing earlier, there's not really any any embedded cost. So one of the advantages of real estate tech is that. It's just labor, really. There's no, there's no fees. There's no marketing costs. You put it in the MLS, it costs zero dollars, um, and the marketing sort of occurs naturally through MLS distribution to all the real estate sites. Um, so there's not really a lot of overhead necessarily on that on that case, but there is a lot of labor. There's a lot of back and forth, unfortunately, uh, on both sides. The trouble with with respect to operating expenses is showings. So we do have to do a lot of, you know, we have to meet people at properties, and that takes, you know, gas and driving around all over the city and stuff like that. That's the sort of the, the challenging part. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You first. Mm -hmm. What's the business model for realtors I bring on board? Uh, what we would eventually like to do is create somewhat of a partner network uh, where we have agents that may work for Keller Williams or Cobble Bank Girl or anyone, and essentially they would sponsor a zip code on our app. Uh, so that, that's sort of like long term, assuming we ever raise money. Um, but that would be the concept is that people are sort of using our app to book showings rather than calling their, their cousin who's a realtor. Um, because your cousin, you, he maybe might cut you a deal, but you know, he might not. So we have a fixed, you know, a, a framework for this commission rebate. And so the idea is that uh, we'd get a lot of leads that come through our app, just like a Zillow or Realtor.com. And then we would have agents sponsor certain zip codes and pay us for those leads. So that's sort of the long range plan. Yeah. Yes, sir. Could this service, um, this service uh, provide assistance uh, back and forth? Yes. The Does the uh, service provide assistance with the negotiation? And yes, basically we do everything that we're, we're sort of trying to be exactly like a conventional, you know, real estate big brokerage, Remax or whoever. Uh, we literally do everything they do. Um, a bit more efficiently and, and for a lot less money, uh, but it's the same. It's really the same stuff. Um, real estate isn't that complicated, especially seeing all these people that presented earlier. Our stuff's pretty easy. 
way, way back. Average time, properties listed. 33 days right now. Yeah. Uh, it, it's around market average, you know, right around 30 days. Yes, sir. Biggest competitor is a company called Open Listings. Uh, they're a YC company out of uh, San Francisco, and they've been around for about two years and, and very well-funded, um, much, much further along than we are. <laughs> yes, sir, very back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean the the challenge with oh sorry how do you how do you deal with um, sort of distributed you know properties everywhere? Um, right now we're pretty tight in just Atlanta. We we just expanded to Tampa and Orlando, which are pretty close to one another. Um, but it is a challenge. I mean, there, there's only so much we can do in terms of sending out contract. We'll still do those things. You know, we obviously do inspection, we do due diligence, we'll do recommend attorneys, you know, those sort of things. But it, it, it can be pretty difficult if you need a lot of hand-holding. On the buying side, we're much more geared towards the savvy buyer that can sort of take on some of those things on their own. Uh, are we done? Are we up? Sorry. Okay, you cool. are. You are out of Thank time. Thank you, guys. Round applause for some showing. Thanks. All right. Thanks for coming out, guys. We are getting ready to post the 2018 calendar. It will start back on the last Monday of the month, like normal, at the end of January. So you will see that up soon on the Meetup. You can find us on Meetup or Twitter or Instagram, as you can see here. Follow the hashtag. Um, please come out and see us at the end of January. And if you are interested in any of the speakers tonight, the presenters, you can catch them up here after the show. And if you're interested in any of the volunteers, you can catch them in the back after the show. Thanks so much, guys, for coming out. We appreciate it.